Inside this video right here, I'm gonna talk about exactly what paramedics do. Here we go. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic, should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, welcome to the video. If you're new here, be sure to tap the notification bell down below, hit subscribe, and everybody watching, hit that like button so more people that are interested in the field of EMS, more EMS students, providers, can see this content. If you're new here, I post new videos every single week on EMS, EMT, Advanced EMT, Paramedic, and thanks for watching. Now, what we're talking about today, what exactly do paramedics do? So we're gonna start this chat here talking about the level of care they provide, and then we're gonna talk about a few other things like where they work, and then we're gonna put it all together, okay? So here we go. First thing you gotta know, a paramedic is not an EMT. What does that mean? Well, an EMT is the first level in the ambulance. Okay, in some areas there's an advanced EMT, which is kind of the middle level, and the top level, the team leader, would be a paramedic. So today we're talking about the paramedic. Think about it kind of as the team leader. That's a good way to think about it, okay? Now, what do paramedics practice? Well, we know it's emergency medicine, it's EMS, emergency medical services. There's something called advanced life support and there's basic life support so paramedics are advanced life support EMTs are basic life support so as a paramedic what does advanced life support mean well it means that the skills and the knowledge that you possess usually tend to be more invasive than basic life support think of basic life support as the fundamentals and ALS what paramedics practice advanced life support Again, it's more invasive or you know, more critical. It's a good way to think about it. Now, going through some of these things here, I'm just gonna, there's a lot of information here, I'm gonna go through it real quick. So first we have advanced airway. So I have things, intubation, decompression, crike. You might not know what any of that means. Let me just explain to you real quick. So paramedics know how to perform advanced airways. There's basic airways that you can do that aren't as invasive. Now think about this. Innovation is taking a tube and using a blade to move stuff out of the way, put this tube, stick it in someone's trachea so they can have a secure airway. Sounds inv and pretty invasive, right? Correct, that's ALS. It's called endotracheal innovation. We're putting a tube in someone's trachea and then we're gonna breathe for them, right? Giving them oxygen stuff, ventilating for them, cool? Now, a surgical airway is actually making an incision Okay, which is actually here in the neck to give somebody an airway when we can't do innovation. Maybe there's major trauma or a, such a severe allergic reaction. Those are some, maybe some reasons of why you might do that. Okay, and then finally here, we have something called a decompression. So if you have a, for lack of a better, lack of a better word, if you have a major lung injury and actually air is collapsing your lung, we can stick a needle in here and then go ahead and actually make that patient better, thus getting that pressure off the lung, okay? That's called a pneumothorax, okay? So these are some advanced maneuvers. Paramedics can do them, EMTs cannot, all right? Now, the 12 lead EKG, we're gonna talk about at the bottom here, and you'll see it written down, I'll bring it up early, is cardiology, pharmacology, and ALS skills make the paramedic. So an EKG will tell you, is this patient possibly having a heart attack? Are they definitely having a heart attack? Or are they probably not having a heart attack, right? To give you some clarity on that, right? Other things here, we have pain meds, sedatives. So for example, morphine, you probably heard of that drug. Fentanyl, right? Uh, Ativan, Versed, Valium, those are all sedatives, okay? Haldol is another sedative, right? Antipsychotic medication. So paramedics, it will determine what area you're in, if you're closer to the hospital, if you're rural, 
if you're in a helicopter, if you're in a ground ambulance, whatever, if you're doing a 911 call or whatever you're doing. But as a good rule of thumb, there's about 40 or so medications that most paramedics carry on the ambulance and they need to know further protocols, right? When you're on a ground ambulance. If you're in a helicopter, then there's even more, okay? To give you an idea. Now, what's all this stuff here? Well, we have IV, IO, IM, IN, PO. So what that means is there's meds that we give PO, which is orally, okay? There's meds that, like a shot, is intramuscular injections. There's IV, right? IO is actually uh, goes right into the bone marrow, okay? And there's different places for that, but just to give you an idea of what that is. And uh, intranasally is just uh, through the nose. Now, wrapping this up with level of care, what is the goal of a paramedic? The goal of a paramedic is to use their cardiology skills, their pharmacology skills, their ALS skills and assessments to stabilize a critical patient and get them to a higher level of care, meaning in this case, get them to the hospital, right? In some rural areas, that might mean stabilizing them to get them to the helicopter, right? Depending on where you practice. But the goal of the paramedic is to use all this knowledge to stabilize them so they can make it. That's what a paramedic does. So let's talk now about where paramedics work, where you might find work as a paramedic, and then we're gonna wrap it all up. Well, the most common place you're gonna find a paramedic is obviously gonna be in the ambulance. Now, there's different types of ambulance service. There could be county, uh, city. Basically, what I'm getting at is local ambulance services that are run by a government agency. Um, there's also fire departments where you're gonna find paramedics. There's firefighter paramedics, or a firefighter and a paramedic, and they might work on an ambulance and do fire duty as well. Um, Paramedics are also going to work in stuff like uh, camps, standby events, as an ER tech. Um, there's certain uh, labs, clinical trials. They might want a paramedic on standby for that as well. Um, there's also times where a paramedic uh, could be utilized as a travel contract, as offshore. So there's jobs that are offshore, stuff like that. Talking about uh, oil rigs, stuff like that. Um, but also there's certain contracts where there could be an event somewhere that needs a mass amount of paramedics and you would sign up to do that. Um, that could be in other countries or in the US. So there's many options available for that as well. Look into that if you're someone that likes to maybe travel and try out new stuff. And the last thing here I'll mention is uh, flight operations. So there's something called a critical care paramedic or a flight paramedic uh, certified. So what that is is Let's say you've been a paramedic for a few years, right? Usually you need at least a year of experience, but usually like to have, if you're gonna get hired, a few more years than that. Um, let's say you've been working for a few years as a ground paramedic and you wanna learn more, you can get your critical care or flight paramedicine and get in and do that, right? Which like I said earlier, you're gonna have to learn a little more and you'll be responsible for a little bit more as well. And the last thing I'll mention here, not written down, but I wanna bring it up, it's a new emerging field of EMS, which is called community paramedicine. So paramedics are utilized to help at-risk patients that maybe, for example, maybe they're constantly going to the ER in their local area. A community paramedic can kind of come in, visit the patient in their home, and actually help them and assist them and figure out, hey, why is this patient continuing to go to the ER and over and over? How can we help them out? Now, there's many different things with community paramedics, and I'll come out with videos on that too, but that is one of the ways that you can have a job and work as a paramedic. Like flight, you usually need more experience to get a job like that. Now the final piece here is why should you become a paramedic? Now I wrote some things down here, but I want to speak to you from the heart. I've been a nationally registered paramedic since 2013. Uh, I first became an EMT back in 2011. So I wanna break this down for you. Why should you become a paramedic? You're probably watching this video, maybe you wanna get, in, get into EMS. Let me break it down for you. So first, if you're someone, maybe you don't like working a nine to five job, maybe you wanna have more flexibility in your schedule, right? So paramedics, some work 24 hours straight, some work eight hour shifts, six hour shifts, um, some work 10, 12 days, evenings, nights. Maybe you want a more of a variety of schedule that might be a reason why you get into EMS, right? Number two would be 
the fact that you get to be a team leader as a paramedic. So you're working in a high level, high responsibility, and you're also a team leader. So if you're someone that likes to lead teams, if you're someone that likes to help people, if you're somebody that likes to work in a fast paced environment, if you like to be outside versus inside all day, that might be some of the reasons why you wanna become a paramedic, right? Now, the other thing is, there's a variety of reasons why people might get, a, get into EMS. Maybe you wanna serve your community at a very high level, you know, in this case, would be the highest level as far as EMS would be concerned. Um, other people I know get into EMS uh, and become a paramedic one day because maybe they've been in EMT for a while and they just want to learn more and they want to be able to do more at their job. Remember, the EMT is the first level, advanced EMT is the middle, paramedic is the highest level in the ambulance. You can go from EMT to paramedic. You don't have to get your advanced EMT in the middle, right? And then finally, um, I know other people that become paramedics because they want to become a PA. They want to become a nurse. They want to become a doctor. But they want to get their hands dirty. They want to start working now. Well, paramedic school, you know, you can become a paramedic in as little as 12 months. Most programs are 14, 18 months. Um, there are associate degrees. There are bachelor's degrees available. It's obviously longer, right? Um, but for the most part, what I recommend that you do, if you're from ground zero watching this video right now, EMT is a three month course. You gotta grab that. I want you to grab that first. I want you to go out, get some experience. Maybe volunteer as an EMT while you're looking for paid work. Then, once you get enough experience, you feel comfortable with the EMS operations, then go apply when the next, whether it's August or January, whatever it is, go next up and apply to paramedic school but you gotta do the work first as an EMT before you just go right into paramedic. That's how it works. Hey my friends and possibly hopefully some new friends uh, watching this video. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Um, I gave you everything I got explaining what a paramedic does. Now, if you're one of these three people, uh, if you're getting ready for EMT, advanced EMT or paramedic school, maybe right now you are in school right now but you're just not getting it. Maybe you're in paramedic or EMT or advanced EMT and you're struggling. Or maybe right now you're getting ready for your national registry exams from EMT all the way to paramedic. If you're one of these three people, get my life's work, get my prep course down below in the description. I give you access to over 180 plus videos of content that will take you literally from pre-EMT all the way to your first year working on the job as a paramedic. So if you're anywhere inside of that realm, I want you to grab that prep course down below and get access to me inside our community group and we are in the thousands strong in our student group. My friends and my new friends, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um when i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there and then I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Adults obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, 
you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have. I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.